Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, we have the 3rd Gen Epic announcement date, the RTX 3050 Ti, 11th Gen H CPUs leak, 12th Gen Mobile gets up to 16 cores, and Intel's 11th Gen loses to their 10th Gen in gaming? Okay, it's news time and first up for today, AMD has officially announced that the company is set to launch their 3rd Gen Epic processors on March 15th at 8am PT. As for the release, Video Cards has a list of the upcoming CPUs, and as you can see, they range from 8 cores all the way up to 64. The 64 core model comes with a base clock of 2.45 GHz and a boost of 3.5. It also comes with a whopping 256 MB of L3 cache and a TDP of 280 watts. All in all, it's based on AMD Zen 3, so we can certainly expect much better single core performance and higher clocks. Now, while you're waiting for GPUs and CPUs to get back in stock, why not learn a new skill with today's sponsor? Skillshare, the online learning tool that offers thousands of classes for creative and curious people. In fact, there's something for everyone, from animation to design and even business, and it's made specifically for learning, so there aren't any ads and they're always launching new classes. I'm even hoping to make my lighting better in review videos with this lighting for videography class. So don't wait, you get all of this for less than $10 a month. And the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity today. Next up, NVIDIA is apparently set to launch a new GPU soon. That is, if this listing by ASUS is correct. The listing was originally found and shared by Momomo underscore US, and according to video cards, it's the specs of an upcoming Tough-F15 laptop. As you can see, in the listing it mentions an RTX 3050 Ti GPU. That's right, the RTX 3060 was just released and Nvidia is already gearing up for a follow-up, at least for notebooks right now. The GPU comes with 4GB of GDDR6 and as the name suggests, it will support ray tracing. Basically, it looks like Nvidia could be done with their GTX lineup altogether. Of course, there may be something lower than this, but I'm not sure. At least that would mean the confusion that came with the 1600 naming scheme is in the past. As you can see, this also mentions the 11th Gen H processors, to which we have the full specs in today's next story. Remember that the H is for Intel's high performance notebook processors. Either way, the leak comes from Raichu on Twitter, and as you can see, he lists three 8-core processors and two 6-core. Starting things off, we have the 11,980HK, which comes with a base clock of 2.6GHz, though that gets boosted to 3.3GHz when in 65W mode. It also gets up to a single-core boost of 5GHz. Next is the 11900H, which has a base clock of 2.5GHz and a boost of 4.9. Then the 11800H, which comes with a lower base clock and boost still. Moving on to the 6-core parts, we can see they have nice base clocks, but their boost is lower than their 8-core counterparts. At the end of the day, these certainly do look to be impressive, given Tiger Lake's performance with just 4 cores. And that's not all when it comes to Intel's upcoming CPU leaks. In a new post by leaker HXL, you can see he actually shared a full list of Intel's 12th gen Alder Lake mobile lineup. Remember that Alder Lake uses a similar design to ARM's big dot little architecture, so it has big cores for heavy lifting and little cores for more background processes. As you can see, the lineup is separated into M, P, and S, with S being the quote muscle. Starting things off, we have the tablet lineup, which really seems sad as it only comes with one big core and four little cores. Oh, and up to 64 EUs. With that said, we're looking at only 5 watts here. Then comes the ultra-thin models with two big cores and up to eight little cores, and up to 96 EUs. The mainstream looks similar until we get up to the performance lineup with a 20 to 28 watt CDP. These come with up to 6 big cores, 8 little cores, and 96 EUs. Finally is that muscle lineup, which does look fairly impressive as it comes with 8 big cores and 8 little cores for a total of 16 cores. Now, these only come with 32 EUs, but that could be because notebooks meant for gamers will come with a discrete GPU anyway. Regardless, I'm still unsure why Intel would use this core design on anything other than ultra-thins, but I guess we shall see moving forward. 
it will almost certainly make picking a laptop in the future quite a bit more confusing. And lastly for today, we have one of the first full reviews on Intel's 11th gen retail CPU. And I emphasize the retail version because so far we've only ever seen reviews on engineering or quality samples. This is the final retail version. Anyway, the review was done by Anantec, and as you can see, they purchased one of Intel's 11,700K models. And when it comes to the results, things look pretty terrible. In fact, when it comes to gaming, Intel's 11,700K actually does worse in most games when compared to last gen's 10,700K, and it gets crushed by AMD's 5800X. Sure, when we move to professional workloads, the 11700K does certainly improve, but if you care more about those, you're more likely to go with AMD depending on your application. It's that gaming part that has me seriously concerned though. According to Anantec, it mostly boils down to memory latency. The L3 cache latency is flat slower in Rocket Lake. Not only that, but the 11700K peaked in power draw at over 290 watts, and it got temperature spikes reaching over 100 degrees Celsius. And that was with the stock all-core boost. Granted, it was an intensive workload, but wow, this is not looking good for Intel. Now, with all of that said, there has been some debate on Twitter about these results. According to CapFrameX, a new BIOS seems to give the 11700K an edge in gaming, but those are just quick benchmarks that use different RAM configurations. These are also completely different games from what Anantec used, and Anantec actually claimed to have spoken with Intel before releasing their results, so it's tough to say for sure. Rocket Lake does offer a new core design, so maybe games aren't optimized well just yet. I mean, Intel did claim to win in games, but they're certainly known for cherry-picking benchmarks. Either way, with the insane power draw and temps, once again, Intel's Rocket Lake looks to be nothing but a stopgap to their 12th gen Alder Lake. Time, as always, will tell. So while that does it for today, are you really disappointed in Intel's 11th gen or are you just waiting for their 12th gen? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you like talking all things hardware, make sure to check out the GamerMail Discord server. And as always, have a great day!